Welcome back to Black News Tonight. We reported earlier in the show the most recent census may have heavily undercounted black Americans. We're talking about a rate three times higher than the census in 2010. To help us make sense of all of this and to discuss the potential negative impacts of underreporting, I'm now joined by Jerry Green. She's a 2020 Census Senior Advisor at the National Urban League. She has more than 20 years of experience as a senior advisor on civic engagement and uh, the census more broadly. Uh, welcome to the show, Jerry. Talk to me about this census. Why are black people undercounted? This year is a record, potentially, but we always get undercounted in the census. Why? Well, first of all, there's no perfect census. Somebody's going to be undercounted, and then there are those who are overcounted. We're rarely in the overcounted population. And so there, there, you know, there's always a fear of the census. Um, the census has traditionally undercounted black men at every age group. Um, black children are undercounted. These are the things that our organizations have worked very hard throughout the decade to try to correct. Uh, and we were making headway. However, what's different about this time, um, of course we know the global pandemic threw everything up in the air. The Census Bureau operations were all over the place. They did a poor job of communicating with the public on the changes and how long people had to fill out the census form. There were hurricanes in the South. And we know that a great part of our population, almost upwards to 60% of the black population are in the South, affected by the hurricanes, affected by the pandemic. But most of all, it was the interference, the political interference by the former Trump administration, um, sending out signals that immigrants shouldn't be counted. One in 10 black people is an immigrant. And as you can see from how we were treated on the border, uh, the Haitian, our Haitian brothers and sisters were treated Clearly, there's a lot of fear. And when you have the leader of the nation saying you shouldn't be counted in the census, it had an impact, you know. And then the Supreme Court, acting uh, on behalf of the Trump administration, closed, shut down the census early during the critical part of the enumeration process when people, were, the enumerators were going door to door. And that's largely a black and brown population that's there. And so the Supreme Court shut off the census early, and there you have it you know, a, a, a huge, uh, potentially a huge undercount. So black men in particular, black children always are undercounted for all the reasons, I'm sure, access issues, them not looking for us, you know, I'm sure mass incarceration, poverty, being uh, unhoused, all these things sort of play into it. But then you've just laid out a set of circumstances for why we're currently uh, right. underrepresented at maybe a historically record rate, you know, from, from like from the White House to the courthouse, we're seeing into the state house. Every every angle we're getting hit. What a lot of people yes. don't get though is why it matters, right? I mean, under, if we're underreported, why does it matter? Most people don't even get why the census is something we should take seriously. Most Americans don't. What does it mean? What are the consequences for Black people to not be counted fully? Well, the census is about money, power, and representation. About $1.5 trillion is allocated each year to communities, states, local communities, and even households based on the census count. And it's important to understand that the, this money uh, doesn't follow the need. It follows the census count. So for instance, uh, programs for WIC and uh, for um, Section 8, affordable housing, uh, Medicare, all of these things, Pell Grants for our students, transportation funds. I mean, you know, take President Biden's yet to be uh, approved infrastructure bill. How do you think those funds are going to be allocated once that legislation gets approved? It'll be allocated to cities and states based on the census dollar. So that's $1.5 trillion each year. Multiply that by 10. We have to live with those results for the next 10 years. Politically, the seats in Congress are allocated based on the census count. Okay, and imagine in the state of New York, in the state of New York, based on the 2020 census count, they lost a full congressional seat because 84 people were not counted in the census. That's how important the census is. And now, as you look at redistricting wow. and the drawing of lines, it's about power, plain and simple, straight up. So if I don't get an accurate count of my people in my community, in my neighborhood, in my city, in my state, et cetera, I might lose 
political representation. I'm going to lose money. I'm going to, my schools may close. My libraries may close. The potholes may not get filled as fast in terms of, I'm just speaking about infrastructure, bridges, et cetera. But Absolutely. the other piece of this is that, like you said, it, it lasts 10 years. So the mistakes that were made in 2020, now black folk, Trump's out of office, Biden will be out of office uh, within the next three or seven years. And we still won't have those resources because of the census. Is there anything we can do or do we just have to suffer for the next, for the next nine years? Well, there are, and I have to tell you, prison-based gerrymandering, just imagine we're already behind the ball because they count prisoners, the Census Bureau counts prisoners at where they're located in the prisons. And where are these prisons? in white conservative rural districts. So that money that would have gone, and you know we're disproportionately represented in the prison industrial complex, all of that money goes to white conservative rural districts. So we're double, you know, we we lose all the way around. I would say call your representative, call your members of the Black Caucus, they know. We brief, you know, we're briefing, we're having conversations, tell them. You want to know that they, you need data. We need data to find out what went wrong in the census. Where are these undercounts taking place on a local level? You know, we need to have granular data. So call your B- Congressional Black Caucus member, tell them you want to know, you want the Census Bureau to release the data on the undercount immediately. And that way, local governments, no our local governments can then understand what they need to do, where the shortcomings are going to be as we come out of COVID. Uh, all these things, but we need the data showing where these undercounts are geographically in our community. L.A., Philadelphia, Mobile, you name it. That's what we need, data from the Census Bureau. That, that That's so important. I'm glad you said that because a lot of people are going to say, well, wow, they got us. They got over on us in 2020, 2030. We're going to be ready. But there's a lot of work to be done between now and 2030. The fight isn't over. We didn't get counted in the census, but as you just pointed out, Jerry, we got a lot of work to do locally, nationally, regionally, to get them to release the data and to make up for the difference because of their failure to count us. Thank you so much for that insight, Jerry. Thank you so much for spending time on this and really devoting your life to making sure that black folk get represented. Absolutely. Everybody, be sure to join the conversation. We want to hear from you. Head over to BNC's Instagram and Twitter pages. Let us know how you feel. Also, visit our website, bnc.tv, and check out clips from the show.